Hi everybody, we're Nick and Griffin from Cool Games Inc., a podcast you might know from Polygon.com. If you don't know of it, we're Nick and Griffin from regular old Polygon.com. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? It's day three of E3. We just wrapped up the uh, little bit of time on the show floor. We're in a, a very hot tub. Mm -hmm. Again, the splashing. It's, I apologize for it. We didn't factor that in. We didn't. What we didn't factor in was the... I think just the mass of our bodies and how it might displace the water when we dunked in. Yeah. If we had gone in with maybe some buckets, we had some empty milk cartons, I think. We're we... about 30 splashes worth of boy. Yeah, that's a lot of boy. That's a lot of boy. Ooh, anyway. that's a lot of boy. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, that's a spicy soft boy. We've been uh, drinking all night, and we decided to do this thing for you, wearing our shirts, because Polygon has a very strict no male nipple. Yeah policy. No nips allowed. Sorry, we're very nervous because uh, we're not supposed to be out here after 10 p.m. And nope. it's almost midnight. Uh, we've screwed up so very badly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're in Los Angeles, California, which I think adds a, a certain amount of... We're, we're not so much worried that we're not allowed to be in the hot tub as we're worried the neighbors are going to call the Screen Actors Guild and tell them that we're shooting an illegal, unlicensed pornography film in our backyard. Definitely looks like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway... Let's do some video games. Sure, let me grab my uh, phone. Same. I've definitely splashed water. Yeah, you know. Into... They're resilient. Oh, that was a fun swivel. Uh, thank you so much for your suggestions. We got a lot of good ones this week. We asked for sort of E3-themed ones, and just like last week, didn't really get any E3-themed well, ones. Well, the ones that we got were very Norman Reedus heavy, which God which, knows oh I Oh, my God. Talk about knowing your audience. Griffin has been on a real Norm kick uh, ever since that trailer dropped. I... I'm so glad I got to be in the room with you while while that happened because just a lot of screaming. He, I saw his oily baby, and you knew game of the year. Let's start with this one, yeah, because it's germane to the subject at hand. Okay, is this, it norm? Was, this one was sent in by Ben H. Airborne Ursine on Twitter, who mm -hmm. said, "Replace the creature in Last Guardian with a mo-capped naked Norman Reedus. Oh. Game gameplay is unchanged. You don't have to change. <laughs> That's such a good submission, Norman. Because I love, oh, yeah." Norman! Just press the button TL for Norman. I love the idea of not only not changing the gameplay, but really just taking that 3D model of Norm yeah. that, that Kojima hand modeled and just really strapping it to the rig for The Last He's Guardian. He's gonna have a tail. He's gonna shoot lightning out of it. Mm -hmm. America's gonna fall in love with him instantly. Mm -hmm. so I, you played a little bit of Last Guardian, right? Yeah, yeah. So tell me what, what you do in that game and how that might be augmented by you a little bit You fall in love with a big dog. Um, and there's no reason, they've spent so long on that game, I think they've got the rigid body sort yeah. of in place. You just swap out the texture, the der the bird dog texture out with the flesh of Norman Reedus, and I think you've got yourself a fucking AAA video game uh, One experience. fun thing about that is that it actually, not only does it change uh, Norman Sorry, from you a have a, a, a hot tub drop right there and it looks like you're fucking crying. <laughs> this is one of the most beautiful ideas I've ever heard. Uh, I think one fun thing about this is that not only does it change Norm, from a two to a four-legged beast. Yeah. Uh, the beast with two two backs, his and his babies. Um, it also does the fun thing of making him much larger, mm. and so it's kind of a bigger Norman Reedus. That it's you can the really... biggest Norman Reedus that you could get. And that little, that adorable little boy that stars in the Last Guardian. Imagine him just nuzzled up in in Norm's neck. There's, there's a little bit of stubble going on. Norm now, is... could we could we make him also Norman Reedus, the, the boy child? I don't really see why not. And I, to be to be honest, I think we should have a slider in the options where you choose really what percentage of the textures in the game are Norman Reedus's flesh. To the point you jack it up all the way. Yeah. All the skin. Can, all we, the get, can we get a full blown Team Ico Reedus collection? Mm -hmm. An Ico Redis helping Redis through a jungle. A small Redis climbs and has sure. to stab Shadow of the Redis. big Redises in their magical weak points. That sounds very good. Uh, one, my one concern about this is his, is his penis. Is his Norman penis? <laughs> no, my that's it's a situation that we're gonna have to. I don't want to be crass and like that wasn't a joke. Like it's something we're gonna have to be we around. Really are because we can't get into like a, a David Cage, Ellen Page situation where like yeah. people hack it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Norm's uh, his Redis. Another thing, too, is that, unfortunately, the model that they used for the Guardian of, uh, or, of when they, when they the capped... The final Guardian. The of, final Guardian of, yeah. when they capped Reedus for Death Stranding, he is, for that entire trailer, weeping. Yeah. Which means that the face he's making throughout the entire The Last Reedus is just, like, this sad, grizzled, like, just kind of a gnarled, whiny look. It's gonna be hard, but he's a professional. I think he can hold the cry face in for a long time. I think he can make it work. If Norman Reedus had a magic weak point. Yeah? Where on his giant body would it hide? I think it would be if you could just part his flaps and just get him right in the mingus. 
Right in the Mingus <laughs> Reedus. That, won't, that can't be in it. We got a suggestion here from Light Lake, Light de Pole. It's a kind of a French thing going on. Drips right off, drips right off yeah. that honey well, sweet tongue. Display name Noghog on Twitter says. That's much easier to wrap your tongue around. Yeah, should have gone with that. <laughs> Biden fall. Yeah, all right. Um, <laughs> I love, I love when I can see it in your eyes that you're right on the line. No, with, it took me a second to like work it out. Yeah. So your Joe Biden is a pilot of. Uh, a rig, like a hot, like now that's, neck rig. Griffin, but, that's a cute idea, but in Titanfall, the Titans aren't yeah, that's a good the point. ones you run around. The Titans are the ones you climb into. So in Bidenfall, yeah, a lot of wall running, a lot of wall hopping. You get you get enough of a kill streak going and then on. You get a giant Joe Biden. But again, we're getting into big, big man territory. Yeah, again, which is like a rich humor vein. But for I wanna, sure, what I want to explore is you are Joe Biden as the pilot, and then if you get enough kill streaks. Just a fucking cool old American muscle car just gets dropped <laughs> yeah. on it and you just like do donuts. They got they get one recording of Go Biden going, <laughs> that's yeah. how I like him. And they, they that put, was so such a good Joe Biden impression that yeah. I literally like looked around he like we're Secret Service. He's, he's here. I like this one from Naven Reddy, uh, who is the Naven Reddy. By the way, I'm holding my phone out of the hot tub and you're holding your phone over the hot I'm, tub. Uh, I'm not precious about material goods, Griffin. That's okay, you and that's me. beautiful. Um, Naven said. Sea of Thieves gets cancelled as you're playing it. Okie doke. Which, right. which is a little bit mean. I played Sea of Thieves. It's very fun. Yeah, I would I, like for it to not get cancelled, but if it but did... But the idea of just like, yo-ho, yo-ho, and Pius right for me. Give me the pearls, give me the gold. Come on, Davy Jones. And then, but like, you're sailing around, you're like, raise the mast, and it's like, where's Steve? Ah, oh, shit. Steve got cancelled. He got cancelled in it. I do like the idea of you're sailing onto, like, you've beaten the whole first world, you're sailing to the next area, and there's kind of just a full mm -hmm. edge of the world, like the water just drops like off. Like you're because... in Reboot, and you run in that game block, but the yeah. game block is like Microsoft or whatever, like, we ran out of money. Like the game block is is Steve is... Gates going... Now, who, which one's Steve Gates? Steve Gates is Bill Jobs' brother. He's the one who founded Micropole. Applesoft. Now, here's one from Ben Zord on Twitter, who says, Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, Thornberries. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is a really fun idea because, as we know, this is the first ever Zelda game to have voice acting in it. Yeah. And if we could get that Nigel, mm, just get that that fool. That's all I remember. Is that fool had a big old nose and no. the daughter? The daughter could talk to monkeys and shit. Well, the one thing about the Zelda games is that characters have made vocal noises before, but they aren't really words. They're just like. And yeah. the great thing about Nigel Thornberry is that he's just going, yeah. so they would still have to subtitle it, right? Yeah. And so that's that is not that much of an improvement on Zelda. I'm worried about. Uh, Matt Heimler says Link smokes a little, and his face doesn't light up so much when he gets a treasure open. Fuck. This is a cool link. This link hangs out outside of malls, and he's just started to learn how to skateboard. Yeah. Oh yeah. But I think he's pretty good at like he even, like even wicked. Wicked can't ollie, but he's not letting no, that get him down. but he's better than a lot of his friends who've been skateboarding, like, way, way longer yeah, than yeah. him. And also, he smokes a little. How cool would it be if it was just, like, you've got fire arrows, and you're yeah. just like... Oh. And then Link just smoked... Pull it back. Lit up, and he used a fire rod, and he just smoked a cigarette right there. And Ganon's like, what are you doing? That'd be good. Ganon would be intimidated, because Ganon would be like, don't smoke a cigarette, this is Zelda. <laughs> I think Ganon would be actually very, very psyched out by this very cool teen who was like yeah. you know how olds get when they get around like when they go to the 7-eleven and they have to go in there to like buy some fucking yeah, cabbage or whatever old that. people eat and there's a bunch of cool teens trying and failing to do kickflips outside he's just gonna he might just stay in his car and then there's no game so that's an issue that's what took this game so long to get developed out mm -hmm. ganon could not get out of his ganon couldn't show up get out of his volvo we got one from i'm galactus on twitter worried goku.jpg which is a fun it's a name pretty good name uh who has a very e3 driven idea uh it is a game with both war daddies and grappling hooks uh we talked a little bit before uh, no it's E3. the two sort of core competencies yeah of E3 war daddies like marcus phoenix now has a beard um the god of war now has a beard link probably gets a beard if you just let I that game so, idle. if you just like let it run for long. Uh, but the best part of this to me is uh, WorriedGoku.jpg's pitch for the title, and it's kind of one of those 2020 hindsight no-brainer things. He calls it Grapple Daddies. Grapple Daddies is very good. It and is. I actually, I think if we Googled it, we would find out that there's like actually a really oh, successful yeah, yeah, yeah. line 
of like really hardcore like Russian survival first person shooters called Grapple Daddy. Okay, not a not a porn thing then. Because where I went with it was kind of like oh, a, like a pornographic. Like I think they're shooting Grapple Daddies next door, which is why we have that 10 p.m. curfew because Grapple Daddies needs to be. Yeah, the, yeah. It's, the curfew is for our benefit because there's <laughs> noises. There's sounds that you can't unhear when Grapple Daddies is uh, speeding. Do you know so. Detroit Become Human? I'm aware, yeah. How about this one from Kyle Backstrom who says, Dorito Become Human, which sounds like an incantation that the loneliest wizard <laughs> would ever, <laughs> ever catch. He does. Do you dude. remember those 3D Doritos that were essentially, I, they looked like they were 3D printed? Are you kidding me? Yeah. yeah they, that's, if there's any evidence that the government has had alien technology for four decades yeah. and has been hiding it, it's the fact that 3D Doritos, like, there's no fucking way they had the tech for that in the 90s. No, well, they, you take a Dorito and you put a straw in it, you... <laughs> Yeah, until that's it blows up. No, those were 3D printed back they, in like 1971, and nobody was telling us about they it. They were, but let's explore this lonely wizard angle because I think that was. What really I'm saying is that the 3D printed Doritos were some sort of weird homunculus. For sure. That somebody was like, Doritos become human, and it was like it right. got halfway there, and then fucking Edward Elric tried to bring his mom back to life, and she emerged and then, like, in the his form of a French tastic corn. Yeah, triangle. wonderful old corn treat. So this wizard, I'm assuming, because you said he's like a lonely wizard. I think he makes a some sort of cream or salve of congealed Mountain Dew, dips two fingers into it, and then fully just Lion King, like, wipes it on the forehead. Uh, my forehead is very sweaty, by the way. You should probably dunk your fingers just, right now. There we go. Just to cleanse Clean the now. Clean now. Um, Does that do anything for you, or...? I'm so distracted by the sweat you just wiped off my forehead. Like, I know we're podcast hosts Did and you, shit, but I, I didn't know we were that close. Sure. Uh, are you distracted by what it feels like to have a head that doesn't have sweat on it? Or is it... Kind of. Yeah? That's a, just a fresh... A new feeling? This whole E3 has been, by the way, brought to you by Tara Long's makeup pouch. She's been keeping me looking nice, fresh, and clean every day. She's been giving us a little forehead dust when we I need I come it. at you natural, because um, I think it's important that you know that uh, Poe Buddy's nerfic. Sure, Poe Buddy's nerfic, but you say that, and I know you like to claim that you raw dog it every single shoot, but we Ooh. do have a little bit of footy of you sitting on that back patio with Tara giving you a quick dab down of the white stuff, and I don't mean cocaine. I mean... Make, whatever makeup, whatever makeup is. is made. Whatever out. makeup it is. might be. It might be it cocaine. Be I cocaine. have no that idea. That explains why it's so expensive, right? This guy knows is what I'm it? talking about. I literally haven't I, understood anything we've talked about if, for a bit. If my girlfriend told me that concealer is that a makeup? Yeah. If she was like, "Oh, that's seventy dollars," I'd have to I'd accept that yes. is true. If she said it was, "Oh, that's seventy cents," I'd be like, "Yeah, sure." Yeah, I have sure. no it's just, context. It's just tan cream. It is. I got a really, really good one here. It's from Crude Buster Mice Nerd on Twitter. Okay, dope. Who says? And this one might be real. A Death Stranding prequel where you play as a whale trying to steal Norman Reedus' baby. You can use own MP3s for OST. So I didn't read the second part. It seems a little bit excessive that you had a really great idea and you're like, by the way, custom soundtrack technology. <laughs> right. A little desperate to put that Wait, bullet point the on the back of the box. But let's talk about the first half because it's very good. We don't know what Death Stranding's about. Right, we don't know how it plays. What we do know is that it could be about whales trying to take Norman Reedus' baby back into the ocean to live with them for right. a while. And Norman Reedus kills all the whales with probably guns. In inevitably, yeah. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Games can be broken down, I think, into nouns and verbs, right? So the nouns in Death Stranding that we know of, Norman, whales, umbilical cords. We don't really know the verb. Oh, I guess the verb is weeping <laughs> over a, a fetus. Yeah. Um, so I think within those constraints, we can make uh, some make assumptions about the whales trying to take this baby from Norma. So Death Stranding, it could be Norman Reedus, sort of a cool spot vibe. Sure, yeah, yeah. Where he's like running along a beach, and he's like collecting soda caps mm -hmm. that but, he throws at the whales to kill them to right, get his yeah. uh, his child back. Um, I read an interview uh, with with Kojima. I know, I'm literally saying out loud everything yeah. that Kojima said. <laughs> it's word for word. Uh, but he said, there's some book he from a famous Japanese author he read in high school that he can't stop thinking about where he said, he was talking about how the first, this is such a Kojima thing to say, the first tools mankind developed were sticks and spears to keep their enemies at bay and ropes to tie things together. And he says every wow. other video game is about sticks and keeping your enemies at bay with swords and guns and shit. But he wants to make a game about the ropes that tie you together. So, so right Death Stranding is a game about tying whales together as a prank. <laughs> right, it's... it's Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, if you like this, feel free to click like down below. Uh, remember to rate it five stars and comment. Today we're going to be doing a prank where we tie three whales together and then give them $15. Tune in. Here's one from Ahab88 on Twitter. Probably Hideo Kojima's, like, Absolutely burner account. Because you know how he is with the fucking... What was it? The fucking whale games? Mm-hmm. Whatever. 
Here's an idea from Ahab88 on Twitter. He says, God of war, except you admonish your beard for being terrible and you love your son unconditionally. Is that, too, is that too much to ask for one game where you're like, good job, son, you did your best <laughs> right? at hunting. You fucked up hunting the deer. Uh, you shot me in I, the chest. That's about as bad a deer hunting job as you could do. But I still right. love you. I still love you a lot. A little bit. Like, it's. I get that every game developer who used to be 21 is now 35 and they're all dads and so every game has sure. to be about dads. But, like, that scene in the God of War trailer where Kratos puts his hand over his son's back to pat him on the back and reassure him and pulls back. Because you know that's going to be a QTE. Yeah, QTE. If you do it wrong, then I guess you, you do You do the, reassure, you your do son. reassure your son. Press triangle to not reassure your son that he did a good job of killing or not killing that aminal. What was it? It was an L, some sort of fantasy L. A fantasy L. But I do like the idea that they'll flip in the script and having a Kratos who A, hates his beard, B, loves his son. Takes him out to a fantasy baseball game. Hell buys yeah. Him some fantasy hot dogs. Sitting in the stands and going, that's my boy. Yeah. Here's a suggestion from Chuck Reed, Caleb on Twitter, who says, Scalebound, but the music that comes from the character's headphones is randomly pulled from Phil Spencer's Spotify library. So in case you didn't catch that, Griffin, because I know you're a little busy, all the music Surviving. In, in the new Scalebound is going to be pulled from... Phil Spencer's Spotify library. Okay. So right off the bat, we got we got Coldplay, like? right? It's a hundred percent Coldplay. I think his Spotify. No, that's mean. I think it's a lot of like Bela Fleck and the Fleck tones. Okay. I think it's a lot of like freeform music. Sure. Benefit of the doubt. Uh, I think. Do you think Phil Spencer secretly listens to Godspeed You Black Emperor? Yes or no? Uh, like, I, I've heard reports to that effect, but I'm a good game journalist, and I won't confirm it unless right. I hear from you the horse's two, mouth. You need two sources. I need two sources to confirm that. I do love the idea of Phil sitting backstage listening to either one of two things. One, like Norwegian death metal to yes. get himself hypey for the concert. And by concert, I mean press conference. Pretty drunk. Uh, two, I want him listening to like Kyari Pamu Pamu, uh, yeah, Yumi Hamasaki, baby, baby metal. Yeah, baby definitely. metal. Well, baby metal splits the difference, right? That's the death metal and the J-pop, so it's the best of both worlds. Yeah. So This bit is for nobody but yourself. Eh, well, you know. Sometimes you gotta toot your own horn. That's not what that means. Now, uh, super fans will know that I did rip off the step chart from Max 300 on Heavy Mode, which is one of the hardest DDR songs, so hopefully someone was impressed by that. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Our special guest on this week's Cool Games, Inc. is executive producer of video at Polygon.com, Tara Long. Tara, how's it going? I'm good. I do notice that you have a small glass of wine and a big bottle of gin in your hands. Can we talk about this that? This is actually Taka Vodka. Oh, okay. DJ Taka. It's yeah. good if you drop one in the hot tub. It's good. You got it. It's called a, uh... Whatever the opposite of a sake bomb is, you just drop a bottle, <laughs> a frozen full it's bottle. It's called a hot tub mistake. Is this a plastic bottle or a glass bottle? It's plastic, which is economical. Okay. Shoot. And it's, um, I'm breaking the seal right now. Oh, so nice. It's, it's as fresh as can be. I'll tell you, we um, did break the seal on this earlier, but I promise nothing has been consumed. So Tonight's about to get bad. Yep. I'm worried that my v-neck is plunging a little too deep. I'm worried about my decolletage. In fact, I don't actually think this is a v-neck shirt. I just it just became one. The water made it one. Because you've been living in a washing machine for the past 75 minutes. All right, this one was sent in by Cat Whom Love Tennis, Josh Grimmer on Twitter, who says, Waluigi Amiibo, but life-size. And, well, it's actually a body pillow. All right, that's pretty good. Now, not to totally take this dude's awesome suggestion, and it is good, and I don't want to throw it away, but Cat, was it Cat Whom Love Tennis? Yeah. That's not a bad Cool Games Inc. submission right there. Like, his username could double as a game idea. Can we circle back to that and get back to the rich possibility of pillows that you snuggle with, but also you put them up against your Wii U pad, and all of a sudden your oh, Smash Brothers me. data gets saved? Dog, if I get a Waluigi body pillow, the first thing I'm doing is putting it up against my Wii U pad. No doubt about that. Uh, the, the fun thing about body pillows, and that's a sentence don't, I, don't I know I say stop. this. I know I, I say this all the time. But the fun thing about body pillows is that on the front you've got like a kind of maybe live like kind of posing Waluigi. Yeah. But the thing is body pillows have two sides of Griffin. What's and when on you the other flip side? Flip it of? over. And this is gonna be a little lewd, so bear with me. And if you don't like the idea, I want you to be honest with me and tell me. But I am I picturing already don't like it. But I am picturing a Waluigi 
face down, and he's got those little, uh, his overalls have kind of a little compartment in the back, you know what I mean? No. Nope. So that you can kind Stop. of, and it's latched down, and you just see just the faintest hint of that yeah. uh, butt crack. And is his butt crack shaped like a W? I think that's up to us. It doesn't have to be. Physiologically, how would that work out? Nothing about, does his mustache make sense? If no. your butt crack is shaped like a W, that means you have five butt cheeks. <laughs> I think he meant like the landscape of it, like the hair. Well, hold on now, Tara. Like, he, I am Tara. Hold on, <laughs> Tara. I appreciate you defending my idea, <laughs> but let's talk more about Waluigi with five butt cheeks because I do think that's a that's a rich vein, isn't it? Don't don't use the word vein in this discussion. Oh, Waluigi, he's got veins. I have a game idea because everybody else has failed us, and thank you for your submissions, but you failed us. But you know how... I want to improve Zelda. Yeah. You know how in Twilight Princess was the first one that introduced you could have two hook shots? Right, right. What about you could have eight hook shots? <laughs> You're talking about some sort of Octolink who can use both his arms, both his legs, and we need to find four more body parts that could conceivably control the <laughs> Oh, bro, shot. we'll find them. Yeah. Just get on DeviantArt. You'll find Link's body parts on there somewhere. <laughs> oh, they got a good topographical map of the way that boy yeah. works. So hook shot, hook shot, hook shot, hook shot, hook shot, hook shot. His eyebrows? Yeah, sure. You can. That's a muscle. Okay. And then where do the last two go? <laughs> Don't look at me. Stop. That is the, the most horrifying thing. Oh, I love Griffin because he's kind of being like a, a boo from the Super Mario series. He's very shy when you look at him. And I'm like, and he just turns like away. staunch disapproval from this side. Um, his dick. And his dick is definitely one of them. But what's oh, the I was eighth? the balls. What's the mysterious? What is the eighth Cylon? Like, what's his second? His second dick. <laughs> Okay, his second it's, dick. His five butt cheeks. What Nintendo characters can't have five butt cheeks? That's the real question I want Can to I? I, what, um, I think even, let's, let's drill a little deeper. What Nintendo characters wouldn't be improved by an by addition of three extra butt cheeks for a grand total of five butt mm -hmm. cheeks? For some reason in this entire conversation, mm -hmm. I know you've been saying butt cheeks, but in my head, I thought we were talking about butt cracks. Okay, I can see why you thought that, because the Waluigi... You're talking about it like some sort of fleshy radiator back there. Mm -hmm. Well, when I said Waluigi has a W-shaped butt crack, I was literally picturing just like a dark... Jink, 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 jink. One, two, three... And that would separate it into five distinct areas? Yeah. I think so. What's most interesting oh, see, to me... Five lobes. Five, <laughs> five <laughs> low-hanging... And the funny right. part about Waluigi to me, and not everyone thinks this, but the funny part to me is that his first and fifth lobes are gauged, which I think is very Which cute. is crazy. Yeah. I didn't even know you could do that to your butt lobes. He, he gauged his butt cheek. Like, to make the cracks impenetrable? It's just like a style thing. It's just a cool look. Go to Portland sometime. Everybody's gauging their lobes. Sure. Everyone's I've gauging their rear Portland, lobes. I've never been to Portland, but I look forward to seeing that when I go. Um, here's an idea that I think falls right in line with this, which is from Uncle Gramps on Twitter. That's Scott Morse. And he suggests, Dead or Alive Extreme, but with Nintendo hunks, parenthetical, Link, Mario, Tingle, Wario, Luigi, Waluigi. We don't we know who the hunks are, thank you. Tingle, <laughs> tingle, 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 tingle. Tingle, 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 tingle. Wario, Luigi, Waluigi. Um, Link, Mario, Toad, and fully nude Toad. So two Toads, yeah. one is a bit more modest. I do like that because it's kind of like, uh, you know how sometimes they've got like summer Isabel amiibo and then like fall Isabel amiibo? Sure. We do need a, we already have a Toad, we don't have a fully nude Toad amiibo yet. Does a fully nude Toad mean he has to take that fucking hat off? Because I don't want to see what's going on under there. I think it's, um... I think he's got a... He's like a potato up there. Sure, like, sure. Just like eyes, but not like eyeball not eyes. Not like eyeball eyes, but like just potato little, eyes. For lack of a better word, urethra. Nodules. <laughs> all over his bald, bald toad head. I was going to say, you think he's bald? I feel like there's like some weird patchy. Oh, you think he's got a beautiful, fucking just sexy a, head of hair up that's there? Combed like, back. He pulls it off and it's just like long. It's like those herbal essences commercials. I think yeah. we're dancing around the real question that all of us want to ask, which is what if toad is secretly hot under there? He rips that off and all of a sudden you're like, whoa. Hello, yeah. hunkadelic. I, I I can see that because he's he also seems like the most modest, yeah. and humble. If you finish a hundred percent on universe. Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, you get all the green stars. He takes his hat off, and it's he's wearing a bikini on his head. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for the first inaugural E3 2016. We're gonna come back and do this year. Over and over again. <laughs> 2016, 2017 Because the, the thing we're not addressing is that all of us have died in this hot tub tonight. Mm -hmm. This is great. 300 degrees. Uh, and uh, just all of my blood has left my brain at this point. Yeah. 
Um, anyway, thanks for joining us for Cool Games Inc. Yep. Uh, you, if we have a podcast called Cool Games Inc., you can find it on iTunes and SoundCloud. Right. If Fox Media doesn't completely shut down this whole operation by then, yeah. we will be back next week. Or like, Nintendo. I, they're very litigious, and we did talk a lot about their characters' butt cheek properties. We did, and that is against the law. Thank you so much for watching Cool Games Inc. Uh, we'll be back next week with an episode. Don't that... call it that. This hasn't been the core Cool Games Inc. experience. No, if this is your first we episode, were, we were, holy it, shit, I'm we so sorry. We were already in the hot tub, and we were like, let's get paid to mm-hmm. be in here. Mm-hmm. Our, our dollars per minute went way up when we turned that camera on. Um, I'm Nick Robinson. This is Griffin McElroy. Thank you so much to our special guest, Tara Long, who basically sat there and drank wine and gin the whole time. But in a way, I feel like you contributed spiritually. To the whole, the whole. You painted a picture of what Waluigi's butt cheeks look like in a way that is haunting, but also beautiful, but also very profitable, and that's exactly what we go for. That's what we need. I think that's all I wanted from this year's E3. So, was Waluigi butt cheek? Yeah, just to contribute to something. You got to set reasonable goals. Is the thing I've learned about E3 because like we might get a Waluigi amiibo, but like I, I actually stuck in the Nintendo booth. Took a, a coin. I took a silver dollar. I scraped, scraped away his, his butt. butt. Oh, no yeah, cheeks that's... underneath there. It's just plastic. So that was a bummer. You are truly brave. I'm committed to the cause. Uh, I've been Nick Robinson. Tara. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Griffin McElroy. No problem. Fun. Live every day like it's the last day of E3. Oh, it all. All the different water went in me. <laughs> 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 <laughs>